there's been a murder. And you're all suspects. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. Did you? He was of incomparable yes. Sounds painful. Of magnificent brilliance. I didn't know you were a fan of Shakespeare. Classic, Claire. Shakespeare died ages ago, like before bread was even sliced. Oh. So we never got the chance to try McDonald's? Well, perhaps there is some form of correlation between our beloved fast food and our Lady Macbeth. This is my mind. Blown. <laughs> we do have fun, don't we? Yeah. But he sure didn't. Should we just go question some thespians? Bye, Yorick. But she didn't even end up with the puppy that she wanted because her grandma's cat's got fleas. So they didn't make it to the 10th anniversary of the first Iron Man film. But why did it just order online? It's two for one on garden houses at the moment in Cafe Nero. Hi ladies, um, how are you holding up? Sorry, what? You do know that there was a murder that happened six metres away from your current location. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. I free tomorrow night. I'm going to go for breakfast in the Lake District with a firework. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. We are the detectives that are assigned to this case. Very important. Well that's great news but we're actually having a chat at the moment. Very important. Two chairs. You know what I remember when I was your age? Young, naive, and I'll admit, not much has changed. But if there was a murder that happened right next to me, I'd be straight to that Hagen Dars, okay? Because those salt of caramel chunks were my best friends. They were my only friends. I hated nursery. Hagen Dars is for pussies. Look, are you gonna help us or not? Mates, what's in it for us? You guys get the satisfaction of knowing that you helped catch a serial killer. Look, if we don't catch this murderer soon, your shreddies and the nannies that knit those shreddies are gonna get it too, okay? So, yeah. Claire, I love your method, in and out of the kitchen, but that isn't gonna work on these punks. Yeah! She's right. We like black pudding with syrup and heavy death metal gulp. Tell you what, you can have the keys to my car. Cool. Okay, so what do you say information have you got for us then? That's Jeremy. Nobody likes him. By nobody, we mean us. He used to fart in the green room before we went out on open night. <laughs> I remember this one time, he was breathing too loudly, so I kicked his legs from underneath him and flicked his forehead till he said the magic word. What was the magic word? Unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all that we needed to ask, so um, yeah, uh, thank you for your time. <laughs> Don't have too much fun. <laughs> or do. What's up, my doodle-looted ding-dongs? Wow. Great facial expressions, guys. What do you mean? Mean you do what? Are you not performers? <laughs> Only in the bowling alley. No. We're the lighting team in the theatre. This is my apprentice, Ben. Ben. Well, it's great to meet you guys. Uh, we just have a couple of questions about the murder that we'd like to ask you. What murder? The murder that happened. Over there. Blood? Vomit? Feces? You're not wrong there, mate. <sighs> not wrong at all. So, 
Were you two both up here when the murder happened? Yeah, I was just showing Ben how lighting can affect the mood in the scene. Do you want to show? It raved the whole time. Cute. So, the last girls that we interviewed said that the victim was called Jeremy and that he was one of the actors from the performance. Oh, yeah. Did you know him? Negative. So, when was the last time that you saw him? This morning. I was in the gents. He was talking to me whilst I was, you know. No, sorry. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, do you? <laughs> I don't know what you're on about, mate. Oh! Who? <sighs> it was actually rehearsing his lines. He was given a fruit smoothie by a strange stranger on the streets. Maybe it's that Chinaman from the pub. You know, he's been acting pretty dodgy recently. Could be. I saw him the other day, asked someone for lemonade. He said it was for his horse, and then he poured it all over his head. And um, what colour was the horse? Like a dark white. Um, I've got to go. Uh, good luck, mate. You've got a bright future ahead of you. Do you get it? Bright future. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks. That's all for today. You never will be in touch. His first black dress. Tiny. His first pair of glasses. So small. His first nappy. So smelly. His first shoe. Moist. His first sock. He definitely had your feet. Jesus Christ. Bigfoot could host Christmas dinner in one of them. They're my sons. He's slain. Oh well. Look, I'm sure your son's name will live on. Even if you do decide to donate the socks to Bigfoot and his family, oh, they'll be so grateful. <laughs> um. Well, you two look very young to be parents. Yeah, you look great for your ages. You're too kind. We was 32 years of age when we brought young Maximus into this world. You're like a bitch. Just to double check, you are the parents of Jeremy, right? His name is Maximus. It's Jeremy. No, it's Maximus. The body literally has Jeremy written all over it. Yes, okay, his name's Jeremy, but he's playing the part of Maximus the Great, and I'm Helena, his mother, and he's Venus, his father. Yeah. In Venus a girl's name? Not in this adaptation, she's not. The look on our boy's face when his long-lost lover Hercules came back from the Battle of Athens in scene seven. There will be the first homosexual relationship in all of Greek mythology. We were so proud. All right, let's cut this theater bullshit now. How could you? We cannot. Great. We are already in the fifth stage of method acting. That reminds me. We must go shopping as I need a new pair of sandals and a robe. Of course, Venus, my dear. I will fill up a horse. We will venture to New Look at sunrise. Ah, that garment seller is a familiar one. Gaze upon these purple boots, purchased in exchange for a bag. I too had a Shakespeare paragraph here, but one has forgotten it. Now a question for you both, that is. How is the cause of death said to be known to thee? Rumour has it, Maximus was chased by a troll in Riverwood. I shall avenge his death in Act 2. He best hope he is wearing his brown pants. Okay, we tried, but these two are hopeless. I hate to admit it, guys, but she's right. Well, have fun with your morning. Look, I've tried 15,000 times to get through to them, Scarlet, but still no answer. Good hold music, though. Reminds me of a wedding I was dreaming of last night. Sigh. Have you tried emailing the agency? Yes, I've tried emailing them. Still no reply. And to be honest, it doesn't look likely that you're going to find work, you know, following what's happened here today. What about the carrier pigeon? No, Brian's still in Cuba. Hi, guys. Um, we're the detectives that have been put in charge of the murder case today. This is my partner in solving crime. My one and only. Molly. <laughs> How are you today? Terrible. Oh. Um, well, can either of you tell us anything about the murder that happened today? No idea. You're probably better off asking her, to be honest. Oh, no, wait, just one second. I think they're journalists. I've got a plan. Hi, I'm Clive, Miss Scarlett's personal assistant, a.k.a. PA, and surprise, guardian when her parents go away. They go on business trips a lot. It's a tricky life I live, but it's fair to say there's a light at the end of every tunnel. Unless it's night time. Well, it's been a pleasure to meet you both. Of course, what's happened here today is very, very tragic. Um, we... Yes, but tragedy does in fact breed fortune for those who seek it. 
I'm sorry, I hope you don't mind me asking, but what the hell are you on about? It's been truly heartbreaking to witness such a mess within this beautiful arts facility. If that was me on Monday, you know, curry night, gets a little bit cloudy the morning after, if you know what I'm saying. But for me as an actor, this environment is perfect for true realism. I think you're onto something there, you know? Because the blood that were coming out of the victim's mouth wasn't fake. I think she's right. Right as a kite? I like kites. Back to me. So as journalists, you'll know that I've been recognised as one of the most promising young actors of my generation. Write that down if you want. I've worked with Barney the Dinosaur and Peppa Pig and even the entire cast of In the Night Garden. What a show! Eagle Pickle makes me giggle. Oopsie Daisy makes me crazy! She does. She really does. Yeah. And what about that stoner? Maka Paka. He actually collects stones. I'll just wait in the car. Stay, bitch. Okay. So we just need to know where everyone was at the time the murder was committed. Um, so where were you guys at the scene of the crime? Me and Miss Scarlett were in her dressing room, practicing lines for her show. Who's doing this interview, Clive? Me. I am. I am an I am's cat doing an interview. www.scarlettsinterview.co.uk.com.cat Got it. Me and Clive were in my dressing room, practicing my lines for the show. I've just written that twice. Have you got an eraser? Um, yeah. Would you like a copy of my headshots to put us in the press? Great, you would. Clive? Cheers. Um, we'll be in touch. <laughs> bye bye now, darlings. Don't write anything bad about me. to blackmail the last person who did that. And it turns out that person was part of the local mafia, so they chopped off my arm. But it's not all bad news, I did find it one day in the morning, fishing. So I sewed it back on, see? Oh. Um, well, you've done a great job. Um, maybe you could pursue that as a future career. Yeah, I'm well jealous. Like, not of the career, but I just like cats off shit. I might just do that. Thank you, guys. Don't worry about it. It's no sweat of our cracks. <laughs> yeah, um, so we'll be in touch. What was your name again? Uh, Clive. And how do you spell that? It's a J, an O, and an M. Clive. Hmm. If we let the liquids ooze out, we could use them as a prop in our next production, eh? What a splendid idea. But then, what do we do for the next show? Something gruesome. Something vile? Disney, Disney on ice. ice! Great, well that's the next show sorted. But what the dickens are we going to do about finding a new Maximus? Tis I, your new Maximus, here to save the day. Thank Mary for that! Mm, spot of tea? Okay. But only if you answer some questions about our murder case. Uh, what murder case? There was no murder here. That guy's only acting. It's all fake blood and vomit. That's a melted Snickers bar. Nice try, dickheads. That guy ain't breathing. Yeah, and that is definitely shit. Oh, fuck it, yes. That's Jeremy. But we have no idea how that happened. We were on lunch break. So you guys weren't in the theatre at the time of the murder? No, we were auditioning actors for the big battle scene in Act One. Yes, you know how it is these days. No one wants to be in the spotlight. When I was a young aspiring actor, I would have done anything, you know? Musicals, nude scenes, I would have even pissed myself. Though that usually wasn't voluntary. How do you know that the murder actually happened then? Well, uh, when we returned, all hell had broken loose. Everyone wanted to leave the production, and the chairs had given up, and the curtains wanted to retire, and Susie, our makeup girl, she'd begin speaking Welsh. So you guys have nothing else that you can offer us? Hmm. 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 No. Except from uh, front row seats to our next big production. You better hurry because they're going really fast. 
If by fast you mean a car with no engine and arthritis. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we'll give it a miss. But good luck with your show. I hope you find a new Maximus soon. Yeah. One that's beautiful, with brown eyes, stunning legs, and a beautiful, beautiful smile. Can you tell my boyfriend about this episode? She can act, sing, and dance. I'm here forever, boys. But then who would solve the next murder? True. True, 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 well, you guys have been absolutely no help whatsoever yet again. You really need to get better at this. We'll be in touch. Well, another day, another disappointment. Yeah. But if we leave now, we'll make it to McDonald's in time for breakfast. That is such a good shout. I could well eat hash brown right now. Or three. <laughs> or eight more like. Eight little hash brown sitting in my stomach. <laughs> eight little hash brown sitting in my stomach. And if one little hash brown accidentally falls into my mouth, there'll be nine, nine little hash browns brown sitting in my stomach. stomach. <laughs> let's just let's just go. Yeah. Um. But speaking of hash browns falling into my mouth, oh, yum 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 yum. <laughs> Um, did you know that if we didn't have a moon, the days on Earth would only be six hours long? What? Yeah. No way.